How's it going, everybody? This is the Dirt Bike Channel Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Brotherson, and I uh, want to talk the gas gas today. So, sweet thing, the gas gas was actually won already. It was one of my sweepstakes bikes in March. Uh, it was won by Amanda Johnson out of Millican, Colorado. There's a, there's a, it was kind of a tumultuous thing like happening in the live drawing. You can go to the YouTube live feed and check that out, but... Uh, <laughs> Needless to say, I thought I was being scammed. Like I was getting these emails from my, you know, my followers all day long saying like, oh my goodness, you know, there's this person, there's these accounts that are trying to scam us and blah, blah, blah. And this is like the last day of my giveaway. Yeah, I think, I, no, it was the day. Well, it was that also, but I, it was happening the whole time. It was whole, it happening during the giveaway. And then it was happening the day I was going to do the drawing. And there's all these people email me. So I'm like dealing with this all day long where people are saying, hey, we're getting scammed. Is this legit? And then come time for the drawing, I go to, I go to uh, call Amanda's phone number. It's the wrong number. Uh, her email bounces, and it's just I'm doing all this live, and I don't know. I, I probably I, I may be done doing the live drawings from here on out, but uh, we'll just have to see. Hey, if you want to support this podcast, one of the probably the best way to do it is to use my links to Rocky Mountain ATV. They're in the video descriptions of all the YouTube videos, or you'll find them over on DirtBikeChannel.com. You can get it there. Uh, if you're looking to... Uh, to outfit your trailer, uh, go to Easy Chocks. You should Google Easy Chocks. I've got a promo code there. Uh, it's I think it's called DBC Promo. That'll get 10% off your order. That's if you want to be able to store your bikes in your trailer and have them kind of uniquely uh, segmented out there. You can you can go to you can go to I think it's MotoProHQ.com and check those guys out. Um, I've got videos on it. Um, on my YouTube channel. That's another great thing to do. But uh, yeah, Rocky Mountain ATV, those links, it's really easy. It doesn't cost you anything if you're going to buy parts and tools and accessories or dirt bike uh, tires or anything. Use my links to Rocky Mountain ATV. That would be awesome. Um, so let's talk about uh, the gas gas. So what we did, what I did, I bought the gas gas back in November. It is April now, um, mid to late April now, uh, 2022 bought that bike and uh, set it up and did some did some riding with it. I didn't do a ton of riding over the winter, um, but I took it into several different riding locations and we did some hard, hot, I should say, hard enduro slash soft enduro stuff. Um, I did a little bit of faster stuff with it and I definitely have some thoughts uh, for you on that bike. Um, in the YouTube video, I, and I'm just kind of, I'm just going to kind of outline, basically follow the same outline that I did on the YouTube video, do a little bit longer form video here for you or longer form podcast, um, on this, <clears throat> but the, the gas gas is kind of like KTM's, um, cheaper line. Okay. So they bought Husk KTM bought Husqvarna, Husqvarna, I shouldn't say that they bought Husqvarna uh, a few years ago. And then a few years after that, more recently, they bought a majority share in the uh, gas gas brand and saved that from it was going into bankruptcy for its second time in I don't even know how many years, maybe 10, 12 years. Uh, so the brand was basically just going to go away and KTM bought it. Um, uh, so I'm happy that they bought it to save the brand. I was a little bit less interested, a lot less interested in re reviewing the gas gas once it became essentially a red KTM. And the people that say, oh, it's, it's more than just a red KTM, I think they're kind of grasping at straws there. Um, this is a red KTM with only a couple of components that would even differentiate this from anything else. And that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means this is another one of the brands. So you can either get the orange KTM, the white KTM, or of course the red KTM, which is the gas gas. Um, so yeah, and, and, and you get it for a little bit cheaper. It's about on the 2022 model, it was about $700 cheaper. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a little, it's 6%, you know, it's not a, it's not a crazy percent. The first time I did the math, I did the math wrong and I thought it was six tenths of 1%. No, it's 6% cheaper uh, because a thousand dollars would be 10% cheaper. So, or seven, it's a six or 7% cheaper with being the $700. I think it's about 6%. Uh, where the bike, so the MSRP on the gas gas was about 10,200, 10,199 is what it was. If you got the KTM version of the same bike or very close to the same bike, it would be the XCW and it was 10,900, you know, plus freight. And what I've found is a lot of these dealers, some of these dealers will charge you freight. Some of them won't. One second. I uh, had to wet the whistle there. <clears throat> Been a little bit under the weather, weather had a little bit of issue with my voice last week. So 
Um, wanted to record this podcast last week, but I didn't get to it because of my voice. Um, but here's the thing. So they, they left some things off the bike though. I mean, they took the handguards. There's no handguards now on, uh, say like an XCW or a Husky TE, you'd getting, you'd be getting the plastic flag style handguards. And I know they're not like the most amazing things ever, but they're not bad. They're some of the better handguards because the plastic is, um, pliable enough that it doesn't just snap. It's not super brittle. And so um, the KTM slash Husky handguards have been very good for me. And if I put Teflon tape under my levers, um, I can use those handguards for a long time. I usually don't break my levers uh, with them, you know, so they can spin a little bit. So I wish they would have my, would have had my handguards. This is a personal preference, but on the gas gas, they give you brushed aluminum wheels, uh, rims, I'm not, I, I don't like the look of them. I'd rather have a black wheel set, which is what basically all the race teams have gone to. So, you know, I'm a little bit less excited about that. Um, the front brake, it's a brake tech front brake. I will get into it a little bit more, but I'm not excited about the brake tech brake. I prefer, l- listen to all these brands that I prefer over it. I prefer the Brembo. I prefer the Magura. I prefer the Nissan. And then along comes the brake tech. So of the four main brakes, the four brakes that I've ever used on a dirt bike, I, I don't know, I'm not, I think maybe the brake tech is maybe my least favorite. Um, and then they made the bike red. Now I love the red. I love the styling of the bike, but this particular one, the 2022 model had a white rear fender. I think in the 2023 lineup from what I've just seen, the, the, T, the EC300 is gonna be red front to back. And that's what I would prefer. So, you know, that's just something to think about. They made it $700 cheaper, but they gave me a worse front brake. They took away the wheel set that I like. um, And they took away my hand guards. Is it worth it? To be honest with you, to me, no, it's not. I'd rather have the Brembo brake and I'd rather have the black wheels. Um, Yeah. And and that's my, that's my thought. And I'd pay the $700 to have those things because so many people who are going to buy this bike, they're going to do it on a loan anyway. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying you borrow or you don't borrow. I'm not, I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm just saying that based on what I know about the dirt bike crowd, a ton of people buy these bikes on loans. And, you know, if you're buying it on a loan and you're paying it over four or five years, what's the extra $700? It's, it's really, it'd be like a buck a month. I don't know, $2 a month. I'm not even really sure. Don't quote me on that. I didn't do any of the math. I'm just saying that I'd rather have those additional things um, than than the $700. So let's talk about four things. We're going to talk about the great things, the good things, uh, the needs improvement things, and then literally the misses or the whiffs here from Gas Gas. So great. And this is so, I do this on so many bikes, but I talk about the motor. Um, and, and And maybe I need to stop talking about the motors on these bikes uh, because it, it maybe can start to sound like a little bit of a broken record. But the motor is really, really good. It's a TPI motor. I think KTM Gas Gas Husky is going to be switching over to their throttle body injected, injected bikes in the 2023 model range. But that is really only going to happen on the KTM XC line and maybe the SX line. I do not think it's going to happen on the XCW line, and I do not think it's going to happen on the Gas Gas EC line. I think it would only happen on the Gas Gas EX line and possibly the Husky TX line. It seems like that's what KTM's MO is, is when they have a big update, they first put it on like their motocross bikes and then the, then the cross-country bikes, and, and then the changes will follow on their enduro bikes the following year. So maybe 2024 is when you would see a throttle body injected two stroke on the gas gas EC 300. Okay. Um, but the motor is very good. This particular one ran really good right out of the box. Um, really, really good. The thing is a screamer. It was a screamer. It is a screamer. Um, and I didn't even feel like I needed to adjust the power valve. Some of the bikes, you do need to adjust the power valve. Some of them you don't. And everyone's a little bit different. So if anybody tells you, oh, when you get your bike, you have to turn it two turns from flush, like on the power valve, it's that little brass key, the square brass key on the right-hand side of the bike. If they're telling you that they know exactly what you need to do, maybe just take a little bit of grain of salt. Take that with a little bit of grain of salt because in my experience, all these bikes are different and you tune them differently each time. This particular gas gas, it ran really well. The downside was um, it 
uh, it wouldn't idle super well, which I'll get to in a little bit. And so I added the air bypass. I mean, I added the idle screw so that I could use the air bypass screw and adjust to adjust my bike uh, and adjust the motor independently. But as far as like, and that was only happening on the steep downhills. As far as just the bike running and the power delivery, you know, from, you know, the lower, RP, lower RPMs all the way up through the higher RPMs, it was fantastic. The other thing that I think is, is great on this bike are the forks. And here's the reason why. Um, <clears throat> so many of the uh, other manufacturers have fallen into this trap of, of thinking that all of us are like A-level, super hard charging, amazing either motocross riders or amazing super fast desert riders. And they're kind of valving a lot of these for super, super good riders going super fast. And I think they do that because they feel like if they make the fork or the valving too soft, then everybody's going to just think it's a soft motorcycle. Well, it's not. And the, the problem is you like Yamaha, Honda, a lot of these other, and, and KTM in their, uh, in their, uh, their, um, suit, their motocross lineup, they valve these things so stiff that it's too stiff for the average rider. And, and I'm maybe a little bit above average, but I like a soft front fork. And these forks that are the Explore uh, 48 forks that come on these, it's a WP Explore 48 millimeter fork. They are the softest, plushest fork of any of the, the like real uh, racing slash enduro slash off-road bikes. They're the most plush that you can get. And for me, I think that's just great. You know, it's especially good when you're doing the slower stuff where you're hitting big, sharp, nasty ledges that might be two feet higher, a foot high, and you're hitting rocks and the nastier stuff. These are the best valved forks right out of the box in the business. And you can get it on the KTM XEW. You can get it on the, uh, the, the Husky Husqvarna TE, and you can get it on the Gas Gas EC line. And uh, I think it's the same valving. It just appears to be uh, that to me. Uh, we already mentioned how sharp it looks. I think it looks pretty sharp. It's probably just because I was so used to looking at orange bikes that I loved looking at the red bike. And then I had two Hondas. I still have, like right now, still on my possession, I still have the gas gas because we haven't delivered it yet. But I still have the gas gas and two Hondas. So I've, I've kind of gotten used to the red bikes. And it's fun to kind of cycle through and just like be looking at a different, a different color fender um, all the time. Uh, and also... One thing that is really great about this particular bike is that it turns super tight. I love it when I take the steering stops out and these bikes will turn really tight. It helps uh, when you're doing slow balance stuff to be able to crank that bar all the way over and make a turn around something and just stay planted. If, you, if you're on a trail in a nasty spot, you come to a complete stop, you lock that handlebar over uh, you know, all the way to the steering stop and it really helps with your balance when you can turn that handlebar a little bit more. Um, moving on to the things that I thought were good. So those things were great. The motor, the forks, the, the looks, the turning radius, those things were all great. Good things. The bike feels really agile. Um, it, it weighed five pounds more than my 2021 KTM 300 XEW. And I think a lot of that has to do with the linkage because the gas gas does have linkage, the EC 300. And so maybe that's where all the five pounds are. Um, but it, it still felt really light on the trail. Just uh, so much of this is set up. A lot of it has to do with how far or how high your bars are, your handlebars are up in the triple clamps. But my gas gas E300, EC300 felt very, very light and very nimble. Um, it almost felt like, it almost felt like it was short. I remember the first time I got on it and I think it was because I had spent a bunch of time on the KTM XC line right before that but it feels like the bike is short front to back. At least it did when I first got on it. Like, like it felt maybe that your front wheel and your rear wheel are not as far apart. And that's a setup thing. That's probably a rake thing that happens in the, in the uh, front fork, if I had to guess. But it does feel really, really agile, and it feels light. Um, and, and I really like that. You know, and it would be interesting. Like I bet you that the EX300 probably feels a little bit longer. I don't, I don't know, but they both have linkage and, and maybe they're, they're very, very similar, but I do feel like if you're looking at, uh, the, the, uh, KTM line, the XEW is going to feel shorter front to back than the XC line, whether or not they are. I mean, I put them in the trailer. They look the same length to me. You know, when I line them up against the wall, they all look the same length. I can't tell, uh, much of a difference on them. Um, let me grab another drink here. Okay, 
let's talk about the the brake tech master cylinder. Um, the brake tech master cylinder on the clutch specifically is what I mean. So they went with the brake tech front brake and the clutch. We'll talk about the brake in a minute, but uh, that that master cylinder for the clutch it it has a light pull, and I remember some people saying. Uh, I'd heard, you know, before I got the gas gas that some people were saying like, hey, they're loving the the gas gas EC300 because it's good for the hard enduro stuff and the, the clutch has a really nice light feel to it. And when I first got it, I didn't really notice much. I mean, when you've got a brand new clutch, they all feel really good. But as I rode it for a while and then I started, you know, comparing it to the other bikes in my shop and it would be nice to get like one of those, maybe I could use rig up somehow. They have these in... Uh, in rifle shooting and pistol shooting firearms, they've got these trigger pull um, measurements or these gauges or whatever, where you can see how much it is, how how hard you have to pull the trigger before the before the you know the firing pin releases. I don't know if I could rig that up and kind of see how hard it is to squeeze these these uh, clutch levers, but I do think it was slightly easier to pull the brake tech mass the the clutch made it a little bit easier to pull than maybe some of the Brembo's. It's not a huge thing, but it's a small thing. And, and I have to say that's probably good. Another thing that I wanted to point out, and I did in the YouTube video, is just the uh, the counter shafts on these newer KTM Husky gas gas motors. Back in the Dizay, I used to have to keep these counter shaft seals on hand, like stocked in my shop all the time because they would go leaking like on a regular basis. And especially if you ever did anything with your front sprocket, like if you pulled your front sprocket off, you could pretty much guarantee that you needed to put a new counter shaft seal on there. Otherwise it was going to leak, um, within the next, I don't know, three to four motor, three to four motor hours. And they redesigned that back, um, somewhere, I guess, I guess it would have been in the 2017 model year when, when these motors became counterbalanced and they, they kind of did a major overhaul and I haven't had a leaking counter shaft seal since that time. And I just noticed it because I was going over the bike. I was looking at everything and I was looking at that. I was looking at my front sprocket and noticing that it, you know, counter shaft seal was good to go. And I thought I haven't had a, any problem with this. And so that's a really, that's a really good thing that uh, KTM slash Husky slash gas gas uh, did years ago. So pretty cool. And then another thing to point out is that is really good with a bike like this is I do not believe that this bike needs radiator guards. Um, there's radiator guards, there's radiator braces, you know, there, maybe we might be speaking semant or, you know, dealing with semantics here if we're talking about the differences. I haven't really seen any guards or braces that actually help over what the stock uh, radiator guards do on these bikes, the way it's designed. You tip the thing over, sometimes it might bend the radiator a little bit, but it's not damaging that. Um, and so I don't think that you need radiator guards slash braces on these bikes. I, I've tried a lot of different ones and I haven't seen that any of them really do anything and save you from damage. What happens is, um, you get a power valve puncture on the lower radiator hose, which we'll get to in, in just a minute. So those are the things that are good. It's got, it's agile. Um, it feels shorter front to back. The brake tech master cylinder on the clutch maybe is a little bit, have, has a little bit lighter pull, the counter shaft seal, fantastic, doesn't leak. Excuse me, and then don't need radiator guards. Let's get into the needs improvement type stuff here. So needs improvement, I'm going straight at the brakes, the front brakes. So they have the brake tech brake on the front, they have the brake tech brake on the back, and I'll just give the back a pass, and maybe it's probably because they don't, you don't have enough dexterity in your toe slash ankle slash leg um, to be able to tell the difference there on the rear brake. But the front brake just simply lacks power. I mean, that's all there is to say about it. We tried different brake pads. It didn't matter. Um, it just lacks power. You know, and it, it isn't real grabby. Like, usually my complaint with a front brake is that uh, they'll be grabby where you won't have a ton of feel. Like, uh, you know, it'll be the, the pull, the, like the braking power isn't linear. Like you have the spike where you're pulling on it and it's slowing down, slowing down. And then you pull just a titch more. And then all of a sudden it grabs and makes your front wheel skid. I, I did not notice that with this brake tech front brake. But I, what I did notice is that I just lacked power. There were times on some of the super steep downhills that I wanted to bring a second finger up onto there. Now I know some of you are going to say, well, you're splitting hairs. Who cares if you have to have a second finger up there? I care because I've ridden bikes with other 
brakes. And these are, they were the weakest brakes as far as power goes of any like big modern uh, high performance dirt bike that I've had. And so I didn't love that. Um, yeah, I'd prefer the Neeson brake and especially the Brembo brake over the brake tech, brake tech front brake. So there you go. Um, another thing needs improvement. And, and I think, and KTM slash gas, gas and Husky, they're working on this. At least I think they are because on the super steep downhills, the bike didn't want to stay idling. It, it idled fine everywhere. If it was level, it idled fine. If we were on like a, you know, uphills or anything like that. But when I was on really steep downhills, the bike did not want to idle and it would stall. Uh, the RPMs would drop down and it would stall. And so because of that, I installed an air bike. I mean, I, uh, I installed an idle screw actually in the bike. I took the throttle body off, which I do to a lot of these bikes now, took the throttle body off and, uh, heated up that they glue in the air, they glue in the idle screw. Um, so dumb, uh, for, uh, the environmental reasons or whatever. <sighs> I unglued that thing by heating it. If you put like a map gas torch on, on the thing for about two minutes, then you can just turn that thing out. Mine was a 2.5 millimeter hex key as all of them have been. Some people have said they've seen torxes, torx screws in there, but mine have all been 2.5 millimeter hex, you know, Allen keys to get that little grub screw out that's glued in. So I replaced my air screw or I replaced my idle screw with something I could adjust and then we got the bike so it could, it would, you know, idle fine at any, basically any angle. So that, that was something that I had to do. Um, needs improvement. Another thing I'm getting really tired of those little kickstand screws coming out. So, so one of the things KTM does is they have a very, very small little kickstand spring that basically keeps the kickstand up. Um, but there's a very small little couple, you know, five, three millimeter screw that goes down in the, you know, kind of down there in that kickstand and you have to put a Loctite on that thing. And if it ever gets loose and you don't know about it, it just, the, the screw wiggles its way, tears the threads up because it's on, it's a little screw on a, on an aluminum, uh, kickstand and there's a ton of tension on it and it just screws up. It just like completely strips out. You lose the screw, you lose the hardware, you lose the spring half the time. Most of you know, if it's in the middle of a ride, I'm getting really tired of that. It needs to be redesigned like Yamaha and Honda have a much bigger spring. And I've harped on that too, because maybe it might catch your boots or something, but at least it's not falling off. And I'm, I'm getting really tired of the things falling off. Um, so that's something that uh, gas, gas and Husky and KTM, I'd like to see some improvement there. Cause I'm tired of my kickstand screws and springs coming off. I mean, it's something I, I got to check it like every couple rides and make sure that it's still tight. And, it, and it, it can just sneak up on you. And then also needs improvement. I know we talked about this before, but I'm not a super big fan of the brushed aluminum wheels. Maybe you are. I mentioned it at the YouTube video and I think there were some comments of some people that are like, hey, I like that better. I love the, I love the, uh, I love those wheels. And so, but just for me, brushed, brushed aluminum, I'm not a fan of those things. So let me grab another drink here. Thank you for uh, bearing with me on that. Here are the misses. <clears throat> so needs improvement, the brakes, um, the bike didn't idle super well, the kickstand screws, and then for me, the, the brushed aluminum wheels. Here are the misses where it's, it's an absolute miss, and I don't think there's any real excuse here. Number one, I'm just going straight at the handguards. Handguards are not on the bike. This is an off-road slash enduro bike. It should come with handguards. In my opinion, and this is a tough one, but because it's like an, or an enduro bike, I think it should come with full wrap handguards. Uh, and then if people want to take them off, they can. But at the very least, it should come with flag handguards. Flag style handguards, is kind of, they're kind of like the in-between. It's the easy answer uh, because, you know, some people will take those off and they'll put on their full wrap handguards. But having no handguards on an off-road bike like this, to me, is just kind of asinine. I, I don't know why. It, it's the only European bike that I've bought other than a motocross KTM or whatever that didn't have handguards. This bike needs to come with handguards and I don't know why we don't have it. Okay. The second thing that needs to be redesigned and fixed is the rear fender design on all of these gas, gas, Husky KTMs. 
the rear fender, the way that it all just kind of hooks together in the back. As soon as you have any sort of a loop out, it all shreds a bunch of stuff in there and then they never come back in. They're a pain to kind of get to fit together and it's, it, it isn't super durable and it needs to be redesigned and give us a grab handle. Give us a grab handle, a good, easy place to grab that isn't cutting our hand off and that is something you can grab either when you're lifting it up out of a hole or you're putting it onto a bike stand. Give us a place to grab back there on the rear fender. Um, here's another thing. We've got the power valve puncture. I just did a video on this. I think it came out today um, of the power valve puncture. What happens is KTM lowered the radiators down, okay? And, and one of the nice things about lowering the radiators down is it made it so the handlebars could turn further. But the downside is, it, especially down on the left hand side of your bike by your left leg the radiator is down so low that it's the radiator hose the elbow that comes out of the radiator and the radiator hose is very very close to the power valve on the left hand side of the cylinder of the bike and when you tip over if you tip over just right or or you know have a crash the radiator kind of gets pushed back and it comes that radiator hose comes in contact with that screw and the power valve housing there on the side of the bike and it will, it can and does sever, put a puncture a hole right in that radiator. It can also um, kind of crush the the hose that or crush the elbow that comes out of the out of the radiator, and it just makes for a mess. And then you lose all your coolant, and your day is done. So we've been putting different guards in there. Um, we I've got some on Amazon that I've had before. I just did the video here today or whenever it was. Um, that you can um, take it, it on the Husky or on the Gas Gas EC300. Actually, no, it came, it came with a different one. It came with a different bar pad. But on, on the XCWs, like the KTM XCWs, they give you, and maybe the TE300, um, they give you like a little teeny, um, <laughs> a little bar pad that doesn't do you a whole lot. But there's like this plastic mounting thing underneath on the underhand side of the bar that you cut off with zip ties. You can stick that guard in there in between in down where the power valve is down on that radiator hose. And it's a really great guard as far as doing that, but it just needs to be redesigned so that we're not having these power valve punctures on our radiator hoses. It, it, it's gotta be fixed at some point here. Um, another thing that I think is a miss and this would add cost. Um, but I would like a radiator fan to be installed from the factory on the, on this EC 300. I'd also like it to be installed from the factory on the KTM line and the, and the gas gas line <clears throat> in those respective lines. Sherco is doing this. Um, and I think it, I think it puts Sherco kind of a little bit ahead in that, in that way. Now the Sherco bikes are expensive. The most expensive bike I've ever purchased was a Sherco. Um, but I, I would like, I mean, on, on a hard, on a bike that is built to do hard enduro and Erzberg style stuff, if that's what your is that if that's what your use case is, you're gonna have to put a fan on it anyway, especially where the TPI bikes run a little bit hotter than than their uh, older, you know, carbureted counterparts. I think that uh, we need radiator fans on them, and it, I've been installing them on most of the bikes. Um, I didn't install it on the no, I did. I did install it on the gas gas because I thought I yeah. So we I installed one on the gas gas. I think it needs to come stock. Um, I mentioned in as a miss in the uh, and I'm just gonna have to stop talking about it because it's just dumb now. But I mentioned that they had taken the kickstart from us. The kickstart housing was there, so if you bought the if you bought the KTM, if you bought the uh, the kickstart converter kit, which is expensive, and then you have to tear the motor out of the bike and split the case and put it in, it's there. But I think in the 2023 or 2024 model years, I think that whole option for having a kickstart even after the fact is going away. I think they've redesigned the whole case. I know they did that on the four strokes and I think they're doing it on the two strokes here too, but I think, I think it's a miss, um, on the kickstart. Uh, let's see another thing. Here was a miss on the plastic. It, when you go to adjust your high speed compression adjuster on your rear shock, the way that they have the plastic, it's not cut out enough where you can't get a socket in there. You have to reach in there and kind of like pry the plastic up and out of the way just so that you can get a like a 17 millimeter socket on that high speed compression adjuster. And I'm like, all you need is a few millimeters of a carve out right here. Why not do it? 
You know, why not? I, they just put the plastic in that, in that area on the gas gas. It just comes down too far and it's right in the way. You cannot get a freaking socket on that thing, which is the way that you need, or a T handle, which is the way that we have to do it. I think that's pretty dumb. Um, and then another miss, I feel like they have, I feel like with the gas gas line, they have the, the uh, opportunity to differentiate this bike a little bit more. Um, and they don't. And, and I don't know why, like, um, you know, one of the things, one of the things that makes, and it's a two, it's a two edged sword here, because one of the things that makes the gas gas a, it was an instant, you know, pick for a lot of people is because so many of the aftermarket parts that you would get for like a a KTM or a Husky, so many of those aftermarket parts would bolt right over to a gas gas because so much of it is the same. The swing arms are the same and most of the things are the same. Um, however, I would like to see, and, and that made, that made it so that a lot of these aftermarket parts came online, like right off the bat, you know, on it, but I would like to see them differentiate this bike more. So it's not just a red KTM. Like I was talking about in the beginning, here was a couple of ideas that I had, um, give the EC line in the gas gas, a PDS style shock, similar to what you have on the, um, the KTM, the KTM line, where in the KTM line, you can pick either linkage or non-linkage based on XE versus XEW. Here, it doesn't matter if you go with the EC line or the EX line, you're getting a linkage. Same thing happens on the Husky too. The only one that has PDS is, is the KTM line. And, and if, if they're set up correctly, I, I think actually the PDS has some advantages in the hard enduro, soft enduro world because you don't have to protect your linkage. It's lighter. You don't have to protect it and it's not hanging up on rocks and roots and, 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 uh, logs and things like that. So another thing is, and this is a big, this is something that I think would be good. Give the thing a lower seat height. So most of the bikes out there, whether it's gas, gas, Husky, KTM, Yamaha, Honda, Sherco, they're all very tall. The one exception is the beta beta actually makes a bike. That's about an inch shorter. And then you can order it. They have a special option where you can order a low boy kit. So it's two inches shorter than that. So now you got a bike that's three inches shorter from the factory. Why not have the gas gas where it's got a one inch lower seat height? That makes a big difference. Anybody who's under about 5'10", it makes a really big difference for, you know, and I think that they could, they could do that. You could put a lower seat on it. You could just make it lower. And I think that would be great. I also think that it could be, it could be, um, it could be spark arrested in stock form. Imagine if this bike had hand guards, if it had a lower seat height and it was spark arrested, or imagine if you could even like drop the foot pegs or move the foot pegs. Why not give us the, the option to install the foot pegs in two or three different spots? Yamaha or was it Yamaha or was it Kawasaki? They did that. Um, and that would be a really good thing. If we could move the foot pegs, how about giving us a really big, larger gain, larger fuel tank, like a three gallon tank? You know, figure out a way to make it so it doesn't look ugly, but give us a larger tank. Um, and then what if the kickstart was installed from the factory? But the main things, like what if you had this, this thing, it had a PDS, so it was set up easy for hard enduro. It had full wrap hand guards. It had a lower seat height. It was spark arrested in stock form and it had a three gallon fuel tank. I mean, just think about the little things that you could do to differentiate this gas gas from the KTM and from the Husky and they haven't. And I think, I think it's kind of a little bit of a a swing and a miss. So those are some of the thoughts that I have that I had on the gas gas EC 300. It's a fantastic bike and there's nothing wrong with it, but I just, you know, there's a few things that I'm like, I, these, these are opportunities where this could have been amazing. It could have been better than it was. And I, I've just got to start, you know, pointing out some of the things that Gas Gas slash KTM slash Husky could do to differentiate this and improve it. And I think there are some improvements coming with the TBI, the throttle body injection. We'll see how that goes. Maybe we'll see it on some of the bikes, uh, some of the models in 2023, or, or maybe it'll follow in 2024. We'll just have to kind of see. But there's a lot of there's a lot of things to love about the bike, and then there's all, also a lot of things that I'm like, ah. Eh, why couldn't we make some changes here? So that, that's kind of how, how it goes. So again, hey, if you want to support these things, these uh, podcasts and the YouTube channel, everything, support my family. Uh, use the links to Rocky Mountain ATV. 
You can find them over on my website, dirtbikechannel.com. They're all over there. There's links. I have ways that you can purchase things. And after you click any of my links for Rocky Mountain ATV, you can buy anything they sell. I know I have like certain like little lists of things of products and stuff that I like or I you know think are good or I've used, but you don't have to buy any of that stuff. You click on one of my links, it puts a cookie, a tracking cookie in your browser, and then you go buy anything that they sell. And I get credit for it. And that really, really helps. So Hope everybody's having a good week. And uh, if you have questions, you can always email me. Kyle at dirtbikechannel.com is the best way to get a hold of me. I don't check as many of the social media messages as I should, but we try to get back to all of the emails that come out. So that's what I have for you. Uh, this bike will soon be in Amanda Johnson's hands um, because I think we're going to deliver that in a week or so when I get some time. I'm going to meet her halfway. going to meet her in, I believe, Grand Junction, Colorado. So it should be pretty cool. So... Anyway, hope everybody's having a good week and uh, leave a single track. Thanks.